All right. Cheers, everyone. It's Amy Mitchell with Houses of Windsor, and you're watching Virtual Tea Time with Amy. And special guest today is Nate Webster. Hi, Hi Nate. <laughs> Thank you for being on. Thanks for having me. Um, so let's see. So before we get started, we like to talk about uh, <clears throat> what we're drinking and where we're calling from. So today I actually went for a calming uh, lemon ginger. So no caffeine. I've already had a bunch of black tea this morning and I don't even have a pretty uh, cup. It's actually from an old company I used to work for out in Palm Bay <laughs> in Marsa. <Nice. laughs> they have, um, what is it? International Maritime Satellite. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's different than what I do now. <laughs> <laughs> and I am calling from Orlando, Florida. How about you, Nate? What are you drinking? Where are you from? <laughs> yeah, so I thought I would show off today. Yes. Because uh, my wife just got back from Charleston. And in Charleston, they make something called a smoky black tea. Oh. And so it's black tea that they actually dry over pine smoke. Oh, wow. So when you brew it, you get this like That's black tea mixed with like bonfire. Like campfire. Oh my gosh, I would love that. I love campfires. Yeah. <laughs> and bonfire and, smells. And they make it in, and make it in Charleston. So yeah, I'm drinking really out cool. of my uh, little little bone china cup. I love uh, it. I'm really off today. <laughs> I've got like the giant cup, and you've got the nice little one. It's, it's like it's a guy with a tiny dog. You know? I'm that with the tiny cup. I know? love it. <laughs> well, awesome. So for those of you who have probably heard me say BNI a million times, this is yet another person I know from BNI because it's such a great network. Yeah. Um, so Nate is in my uh, BNI chapter, Professional Connections. And Nate, when did you join? Because it's been a little while now, right? When did you start? Yeah, I joined uh, literally at the beginning of the year, January. Okay. Um, and then by March, we were all quarantine so it's been right. a really interesting adventure in bni to have uh, so much of it online but right. surprisingly it's amazing how much business we've been able to refer to each other uh, right we've been able to kind of stay connected even right. though pretty much half of our time together this year has been over zoom right that's a good point yeah because i had at least almost a year of like going to the meeting solid in person before this hit <laughs> <laughs> so right, right yeah and this and I mean I like the I mean I'm fine with zoom obviously I do this now <laughs> and I feel like I get to hang out with people all the time even though we're not physically uh together but um yeah so Nate why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do <laughs> yeah sure so um I'm pretty much uh um all about psychology and a lot of my life is about psychology. Mm -hmm. So uh, not only do I kind of practice uh, psychology um, in Maitland as a mental health counselor, uh, but I also teach it as well um, to about three or 400 college students oh, wow. um, over at Valencia. <laughs> and so I had this very interesting uh, schedule most weeks where Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm counseling people. And then Tuesday, Thursday, I'm helping a bunch of 18 to 22 year olds uh, get yeah. through their uh, psychology <laughs> course and uh, kind of help them find themselves along the way because that's mm -hmm. the, the season of life where a lot of young people right. are like, who am I and how do mm -hmm. I think and what do I want to do and so I get to kind of do that as well mm -hmm. um, and then yeah my wife is is equally as um, into psychology as me but mm -hmm. she kind of does it more from like a historical perspective oh so cool loves history. She, she has a master's degree in history mm -hmm. and so you can imagine what our dinner time conversations are like <laughs> uh, history, psychology, we're just very uh, intense, interesting, um, fun people, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, love, <laughs> that's a lot of what I like. I about. like, yeah, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm awesome in my opinion. Other people may be like, what are you talking about? All this technical Right, stuff. right. That's awesome. Yeah, I find psychology very interesting. I mean, I guess you'll, you know, I'm what's called like an armchair psychologist, but I have Yes. Some friends, in, yeah, I have some friends in psychology, and then uh, I have a friend in psychiatry over in Tampa, and so that's always uh, a super, yeah, fun, interesting one <laughs> to pick his brain as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, or trying to make him diagnose people he's never met <laughs> by describing. Them. What do you think of that guy? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely weird. And yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah, definitely narcissist. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, <laughs> one of my favorite things is uh, I'd be like, okay, but if you had to like put me in a camp, like if you just had to diagnose me with something, like what do I fit closest to? <laughs> So you have to preface it by saying I'm not going to be offended. I'm yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it was it was like a whole group of friends with this one friend, the psychiatrist, and he's like, "Oh, Amy, he's like, you'd probably just be like GAD, like general anxiety disorder." It's like, that's not <laughs> that's not fun, like because everybody else got something crazy. <laughs> I shouldn't say crazy, <laughs> but they got like you know a narcissist to someone. Uh, oh, well, he himself calls himself, but uh, I never say it right, histrionic, like. He's like, you know, okay. wow. <laughs> that's the one he closely identifies. <laughs> he must be a good time then, isn't he? <laughs> he is amazing. Yeah, everyone yeah, loves yeah. him. <laughs> so, anyway, I digress. <laughs> My point is that, yes, I like psychology type stuff too. Um, yeah. But so, what does your wife do then with the history side of it? Yeah, so she's really interested in religious history. And so she oh. is really passionate about kind of, you know, uh, understanding the history of uh, religion, specifically Christian religion. Mm -hmm. And she's one of those interesting women who's like really strong and really smart, and really independent. So she's had a really interesting uh, journey the last three or four years, being in the corporate world oh. um, and being a student uh, mm -hmm. and being around academia and intellectuals, which by the way, are a lot of men, you know, <laughs> trying to survive right. and be strong in that. Um, and so I'm just really proud of her because it's not easy being a woman who's intellectual and passionate and a go-getter um mm -hmm. kind of want to do their own thing uh, but right, she's managed right. it really well yeah that's really cool so when did you guys meet how long have you been together uh we'll be together eight years this december which is pretty crazy yeah yeah it's actually a funny story my mom actually uh was my was my wife's mentor <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and i was up in north carolina playing college football mm -hmm. so i was like in the other side of, of the East Coast. And one Christmas I came home and mm -hmm. my mother who had been mentoring my wife, Jennifer, uh, kind of sneakily choreographed a dinner where oh she gosh. invited her over. And obviously I was home visiting. Right. Um, and when we, when we met, I was just blown away. Oh. You know? I mean, <laughs> I, I thought I was, you know, uh, a sensitive, thoughtful, contemplative guy. And then I met this woman who obviously, because she's studying religious history now, right, right. at the time was very reflective and contemplative, which mm -hmm. for me is like very attractive, a woman yeah. who's very thoughtful and contemplative, you know? Right. And so when I met her, I was like, wow, this is <laughs> interesting. If you're, like, if you're like outpacing me and outthinking me and out right, right. Me, I'm pretty attracted right now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, from there, we just kind of continued to, to hang out. And mm -hmm. I went back and played football for a little bit longer. She mm -hmm. studied abroad. For a little mm -hmm. bit uh, while longer and then uh, about a year later we both found ourselves back on orlando football wasn't for me no. and he was done traveling and studying abroad and then once we were in the same town it was just a matter of time before i was like hey you want to hang out and <laughs> kind of took off from there that's awesome so where was she studying abroad so she was actually in north africa whoa so, oh yeah, okay in morocco wow and so she was um up there um, studying abroad, doing some cultural immersion, kind of learning about the culture, um, learning about, um, you know, um, kind of the North African, Middle East culture. Um, mm -hmm. She was an anthropology major in her undergraduate oh. uh, studies. Okay. So for her, she's yeah. always loved cultures and always mm -hmm. loved. And that's a lot of what we bonded over. We both love cultures. It's part of the reason why she's now an Anglophile, a lot like you. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought I recalled, yes, <laughs> one of my first talks at BNI. Was that she's an Anglophile? Oh, is she ever? I mean, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, <laughs> old cottages, tea. I mean, it's like ridiculous how much she loves the English right. and the Indian culture. And but has she been over there? Passion. Yeah, so that's yeah. where she got her master's degree. Oh, oh, lucky her. <laughs> yeah, from uh, Nottingham University. Mm -hmm. Really which cool. Which is where our friend Robin Hood is from. <laughs> So she was there. And then, uh, yeah, she's been there every year for the last uh, basically three years, uh, kind of finishing her degree and getting mm -hmm. her degree. And then most recently, she graduated this past December uh, with her master's degree in history, religious oh, history. Oh, wow. So, Super yeah. cool. Yeah, she's yeah, quite the Anglophile then, the, <laughs> the educated Anglophile. She just needs a British accent, you know. And yeah. She's good to go. yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> 
So where, where are you originally from? Then you went to North Carolina, but that, was that just college or what was that? Yeah, so my family's actually Canadian. Oh, so, oh okay. Yeah, so so you're part family. of the Commonwealth. <laughs> <laughs> That's my first thought. And I'm like, oh, you get to claim the queen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, our queens and all of our money, our weird, weird yes. money, our loonies, our toonies. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. awesome. <laughs> yeah, so my parents are actually on green card still. Wow, okay. Um, and so I, I always make the joke that I'm an anchor baby, <laughs> you know? Um, right. And so uh, first American in my family. Um, and thankfully, though, I kept my dual citizenship. So oh, okay. I was able to still, still right. be Canadian and an American. Right. I'm not sure if that's allowed, so maybe after publicizing this, I'll get approached by the TSA. And I'll <laughs> right, yeah. right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm originally Canadian, and uh, and it's been fun because, you know, marrying somebody who's an Anglophile, mm -hmm. and being so Canadian, Canadians are still very British and mm -hmm. English. Uh, they just don't necessarily have the accent, but they have that propriety, you know, that, that social yeah. propriety that the mm -hmm. English have. Yeah. Canadians still have that very much, and so it's... <laughs> It's been interesting to kind of marry somebody who's into that culture and right. to kind of be a little bit from that culture because of my Canadian roots. Right. Yeah. And does your does your wife pick up on it? Does she does she appreciate it? <laughs> the Canadian. Well, it's interesting. Part? My wife, my wife is actually a, a half Hungarian. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I guess you could say I don't really know much about Hungarian culture. I probably yeah. should study my wife's culture more. Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, she's she. We seem to get along. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> or maybe because I'm just so British and polite. I, right, right. It's just been, it's been a, smooth, a smooth eight years. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, that's really cool. So, okay, so we talked a little bit about you and like I wanted to get to know, you know, all your backstory and stuff anyway. But yeah, what I really want to know is what is your special interest or hobby or obsession? What's your like weird thing that like either your friends know you for or maybe people don't even know about you, like your secret gamer? <laughs> what what's your thing? Well I'm definitely a secret gamer. Yeah? <laughs> I don't think it's that secret to be a 30 year old man in America who loves video games. <laughs> in fact I think it's I a know this it. Yeah, that's true. But I don't assume it. Like when I meet people, <laughs> until they tell me they play their gamer, I don't assume it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I definitely love to game. Um, but a lot of people know that about me, and it keeps me young. So I mm -hmm. can because I work with a lot of families and a lot of young adults. Oh right. Yeah. So it helps that I that I game because I know the lingo, mm -hmm. you know, and I know and I know the references. Um, but I would say something that's lesser known about me that's that's probably equally as fun. Mm -hmm. um is that uh, is that i'm a big foodie i love to cook oh oh okay um and uh i can be kind of a snob about it you know what yeah i, mean? uh, I kind of like my my high quality ingredients oh okay I like kind of taking a lot of time to, to cook something good um but yeah i just uh, i just cook a lot of stuff from scratch and um and have dabbled in baking a few times that's so to say do you like cooking more than baking or yeah cooking is a lot more fun than baking Really? I'm much more of a baker. I don't like cooking. <laughs> I, I cook to survive if I have to. <laughs> I like baking. <laughs> See, baking is actually technical. So it depends on your personality, right? Oh. So baking is like rules and, and steps. That's, well, cooking that's... is like, how do I feel tonight? Yep. You know, you just that's kind of throw me. it. Yeah. <laughs> I want rules and steps. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I'm kind of like, I feel like something spicy tonight. So I'm going to make right. this dish that's normally not spicy. Mm -hmm. totally spicy tonight right and you're gonna turn it into your own thing yeah mm -hmm. no i'm like here's the recipe <laughs> make sure you follow it exactly i know that's like that's like for me being a box i'm like no right I right do. but that's a really good point i never thought about that the difference between people like cooking versus baking i just always think like do people like savory or sweet stuff <laughs> but i think you're right it's probably more about the process yeah. than than the outcome but yeah. So what are your, so does your wife cook too, or are you like the chef of the family? So she does a little bit of baking, but um, yeah, I, I tend to be the one that's kind of the chef of the family. Mm -hmm. um, just because I, it, for me, it's like a form of self-care. Like for right. me, being able to, after a long day, walk into a grocery store, mm -hmm. you know, pick out those exact ingredients I want, <laughs> take them home and kind of turn them into like cordon bleu mm -hmm. or uh, ramen 
you make right. it with a nice ramen or really sure. nice chili. Right. Um, you know, or if I get, you know, really wild, you know, I'll do like a croque monsieur, you know, something <laughs> something really out there. Yeah, that you know? sounds very fancy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I do very well, but <laughs> but I but I try, you know. Um, to me, it's just like, it's always been like the greatest way I can love myself, especially yeah. if I'm buying like a nice piece of meat or mm. buying a nice loaf of bread. Because mm -hmm. you can get some nice bread around town. Like there's some right. nice artisan bread that's like $11. Oh, wow. Which, okay. Which is, which is expensive. Right. You know? But you only get it like once in a while as like a little right. food for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's just really worth it because it's like, especially a food feature soul, it's, it's, for me, it's always been just like the greatest way to have fun and, and, and self-care. And have you always liked cooking then? Or did this start at a certain age? Like, where did it come from? <laughs> I, think, I think my mother wasn't uh, always uh, uh, up to cooking dinner every single night of each week. Okay. Like, probably a lot of moms. Right, yeah. You know, after you, mm -hmm. after you do it, like, three nights in a row and your kids are eating your food in five seconds, you're like, right, right. why did I spend two hours on that? Right, right, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she would... She would definitely cook, you know, three, four times a week. But then there was definitely two or three nights a week where she was like, hey, guys, you know, just eat what you can find in the cupboard. I love it. <laughs> and that's when it kind of began. I was like, all right, Uncle Ben's rice. And OK, there's a frozen, you mm -hmm. know, chicken breast in the fridge. OK, mm -hmm. you know, got some spices in the drawer. And, and that's kind of when the exploring began. And next thing I knew, I was like, this is fun. This is nice to, like, <laughs> spice up Uncle Ben's rice into something exotic and, like, mm -hmm you know, put some spices on your chicken and make it tastier than just a, a little parcel of breast, you know, mm -hmm. um, it was, it kind of started there and then from there just kind of took off. Have you like taken any cooking classes or you just kind of, it's all self-taught, like you just kind of play with it along the way? Yeah, my wife and I actually took uh, my first cooking class together uh, this last Christmas. Um, you know, the, uh, the Publix in the Winter Park Village? Uh, sure. <laughs> I know there's a bunch of Publix everywhere. <laughs> well, uh, Publix <laughs> started this whole thing called Apron Cooking School. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the Publix on, in Winter Park Village is the Apron Cooking School. And they do like two or three cooking schools a week from oh. like sushi uh, to like desserts. Um, I think they even, they'll even, you can even learn how to make some beverages. Oh, that's cool. Um, but this this past December, this past winter, um, my wife and I did a cooking class for German pastries. Ooh, that sounds yeah, really so cool. Yeah, so we learned how to bake some German pastries and some cake. Um, they're all they're all these desserts in German, so mm -hmm. I probably couldn't <laughs> pronounce it for <laughs> yeah, you. Right. You know, but uh, yeah, I got a chance to kind of learn uh, that way, and it was it was impressive. I mean, Publix really hires some pretty pretty mm -hmm. um, qualified cooking instructors who. Mm -hmm. We'll walk you through it. Right. Uh, the only downside is that as a 30 year old male, you kind of stand out. You know, you don't see a lot of 30 year old guys come into the apron cooking school and learn. Right. How to cook. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, then you just get to be the star student. <laughs> you stand yeah, out. I was like, okay, I'm like really, uh, you know, the, the star student because everyone else is usually right. a, an elderly grandmother somebody somebody's right. elderly grandmother right. well, say it's not yeah and it's not just that you're a 30 year old guy but you're for those you know who people have not seen you in person before you're tall you're quite tall yeah. <laughs> so mm -hmm. especially if you're you know a bunch of old ladies you're probably towering <laughs> over all of them and i guess i got some grandson vibes they're like oh hello oh my, my god yeah. <laughs> I love it. oh my gosh that's really good so do you have, let's see, do you have like a favorite dish that you make repeatedly like for yourself or like you and your wife? Yeah, so this is this is when it starts to get really secret. Okay, oh, okay, yeah. Sorry, should I not ask? No, 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 no. This, is, this is good. This is confession hour. Okay, okay. So I, I love ramen. Okay. And I don't know how much you know about ramen, but ramen I know it doesn't have to be like the square packages that I'm used to. <laughs> yeah, right. It doesn't have to be that. It can actually be something <laughs> quite right. good and tasty. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The so ramen originally started in Japan, from my understanding, but okay. has kind of made its way uh, to all of its Asian neighbors, uh, like Korea, China, and I think even India probably does its own version of, mm. of ramen. Mm -hmm. um, or, at least, or at least what would look like a ramen. Right. And ramen is one of those things that's a really interesting dish because 
uh, it, it, it's all around the broth. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what makes it really different than a lot of other dishes because you're spending a lot of time basically brewing like a tea right this this broth which can be a mm -hmm. mix of spices you know and um you know uh, uh meats mm -hmm. and, and peppers uh, to create uh this kind of uh, base in which then you add noodles and vegetables which of course kind of suck in all the flavor mm -hmm. And, uh, and it becomes, and this is probably why I like it, it becomes a really delicious, but, but uh, light and, and easy way to kind of enjoy food. Oh, um, okay. I, I like American food, but American food, especially when it's good, is like really heavy, <laughs> right. really fried, really <laughs> salty, and you eat it, and you're basically like, I get to go nap for an hour. Right, yep. You know? mm -hmm. but, but ramen is so great because it's so tasty, but it, it doesn't take you a lot of work to digest it, and you feel really comfortable and satisfied afterward. And it's just super tasty. I mean, you get like a lot of cool flavors from mm -hmm. like sour to sweet to spicy. Okay. Then of course there's umami, which What's is that? the fancy way of saying fatty, spicy, sweetie, sugary all at once. <laughs> you know, so it's like, yeah, give me umami. everything. <laughs> yeah. So what's the, okay. So then what's the, what are the noodles that you like that you use? Cause I'm assuming you don't make the noodles, do you? <laughs> yeah, that, that's next level. That's when I get okay. to the kitchen and I yeah. can afford it. Yeah. yeah. So if we're not supposed to buy the square, the square noodle, <laughs> what are we supposed to buy? <laughs> well, for anybody watching this who's who's familiar with Italian food, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, Asian food's a bit of the same way when it comes to noodles. And so you know the Italians have like the bow tie, they have like the shell, they have like the linguine or the angel hair. Um, Asian noodles are actually a lot of the same way. And so they have like your udon, your middle, your mini udon, your lo mein. Mm. And honestly, you know, it really just kind of depends what you're in the mood for. I'm sure like a traditional mm -hmm. ramen chef would say, no, no, you only eat <laughs> this kind of noodle. Um, but honestly, yeah, I've even used pasta noodles for ramen. Yeah. Uh, sometime because even though ramen is, is uses rice, mm -hmm. while Italian uses uh, wheat, Mm -hmm. um, you basically get the, the, the same flavor, especially if you're going to pinch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> if that's the only noodle you've got. <laughs> right, right, right. So, um, yeah, for those who like cooking, it's it's really fun because it's basically like, you know, it's basically like taking one single food dish and mm -hmm. being able to kind of mix out the parts depending on what you like and then what you food for, uh, which is why I've always liked ramen and found it such, such a fun dish to, to eat. So for like the beginners, anyone watching that like might want to start dabbling in this, what do you suggest? But also like, is there a basic like starter, like broth wise or something that's like, you know, because of course I want something that has instructions. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like, tell me where to start before I have to like go off on my own <laughs> with the rest of it. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, you know, just getting the broth right is 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 the is what you need to start off with and uh, uh thankfully there's a lot of places in town because ramen's kind of growing in popularity mm -hmm. um there's a place up the road by p is for pie it's mm -hmm. like a co-op uh, a shopping plaza uh, mm -hmm. with a bunch of different stores inside of it and uh, they just opened an incredibly popular ramen sh shop yeah. there's another one downtown all these different places are starting to also sell their own broth like a like a starter oh, okay. broth and so mm -hmm. you're giving people a chance to, to kind of take take the broth home to kind of give you kind of give you that base because that's kind of the most technical part of ramen right um, after that you just kind of throw on whatever and you're good to go mm -hmm. um but yeah i mean honestly it, 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 it's all about just kind of you know flavoring flavoring water mm -hmm. flavoring you know your your chicken stock your your, your chicken broth you know with whatever you like mm -hmm. and i've seen people who just love a nice sweet soup other people who yeah. kind of like a really spicy soup there's people who want to be crying while they eat soup oh no i can't do that <laughs> I, well i don't do that with any food i'm not not a spicy person but what yeah. do, what do people put in it you said like if they want it sour what do people put in it if it's just sour? Um, yeah this is when you get really into kind of asian culture so there's something mm -hmm. called lemongrass okay which, which is a grass that uh, is is sour like our lemon is our lemon fruit oh, is in America. Okay. they have a mm -hmm. grass that's that's sour mm -hmm. you know and so they'll use a lot of lemongrass to kind of uh, sour things up um 
but yeah, they also they're also really into fermenting. I don't know if you've ever heard mm. of some of the strange things that the Asian culture ferments. I have some friends that have traveled. I've heard, <laughs> I've heard yeah. stories. Yeah, they, they, they have this thing called the, the thousand year old egg. Have you heard of that? Yeah, remind me what it is, but I remember hearing about this. Yeah. Yeah, it, it may be wrong, but I think they basically um, dig a hole, mm -hmm. stick some eggs in the ground in a hole, and then leave them in the ground for like 10 days. Oh, yeah. Kind of like decompose and, and kind of ferment. And then they take uh -huh. them out and eat them. <laughs> <laughs> like, bravo, man. You, you can have three or more. I mean, wow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, no, thank you. I'm sure I'm always curious to know, like, what, what do we eat that, like, you know, other cultures are like, oh, my God, that's so gross. Like, I would never. The way that, like, we look at, you know, the egg or whatever and like oh that's so gross or i have friends that have traveled I'm trying to remember now if it was like cambodia or thailand because they traveled to both places but they talked about um jello blood <laughs> like oh yeah jello cubes of blood yeah. and it was like like whose blood is it <laughs> like what blood is it yeah like blood sausage in, in the uk oh well yeah that's true yeah yeah yeah, yeah i haven't tried that either but <laughs> i've had yeah I've seen it. My friends almost got me to eat it, and then they one person told me what it was, and I was like, eh, "I'll pass." <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. 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 But um, I think what was it Scott Scott Bakayev? So when we were talking, he had traveled with his wife over to Scotland and and places over there, and he said he tried haggis and loved it. Thought yeah. it was great. Um, and then. Well, actually, now I can't remember if he said he loved it. He just said it wasn't it wasn't weird. Like he acted like it was like totally fine to eat. And then um, blood sausage, he acted like yeah, he tried it, he take it or leave it. Like it wasn't a huge deal. Like he wouldn't ask for it, but if it was on his plate, he would eat it. <laughs> so, yeah. so some people are yeah braver than I <laughs> when it comes to trying stuff. I mean, if you've ever sat down and eaten a full English breakfast. It's actually, oh, that's it's so like good. Strange. Yeah, because it's like baked beans, yep. mushrooms, tomatoes. Tomatoes, yeah. Like stewed tomatoes or steamed like tomatoes and mushrooms. Yeah. You have yeah. your eggs. Uh -huh. You have their version of bacon, which to us is like kind of like a really fatty piece of bacon slash ham. Like it's right. kind of a weird, yeah, a combo. And then, yeah, they have their sausage. Yeah. Um, and like you said, the beans and there's toast. We're missing anything. and then sometimes they throw in the the blood pudding yeah but i rarely don't yeah like if you go out at restaurants and stuff i usually i've never had it i've only had it when like a friend was cooking the english breakfast at home but i love it like i love the english breakfast it is so bizarre compared to you know what we eat here really it's like the beans really it's like the beans tomatoes and mushrooms just throw the whole thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like you were good at tomatoes, eggs, and toast, and then you threw in baked beans and mushrooms. Right, out. right, right. Yeah. And like some people, I probably like on TV shows or whatever they watch, but it's like they're not even eating the whole thing. Like all they want for breakfast is beans and toast. And it's like, what? <laughs> yeah, like, like beans on the toast or separate? Or right, right. And their beans are very specific. It's like the Heinz brand beans and they little like blue labels. And they're like more on the tomato side of things versus like you know some of the like sweet barbecue like baked bean flavors over here right. yeah theirs is a different yeah flavor which goes great with their breakfast <laughs> i'm on board for it <laughs> when you do when you do your your tea times mm -hmm. do you do you serve uh food at them i do yes yeah. yeah so i serve but it's like the tea party type food so like little finger sandwiches and scones and um like the different baked goods uh, there's, yeah, like, I love the name. They have a uh, name of a cookie called a Jammy Dodger. <laughs> That's one of my Ooh, favorite so English. names. English. Give me that Jammy Dodger. I know, <laughs> right? It's the best name. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I do, I do make them, but I don't have a reason at this moment to serve a full English breakfast or bangers and mash or any of it like um because have you been over there i know you said your wife's been obviously but have you been over there yes so i yeah. joined her for her graduation last fall okay and got a chance to uh to to visit uh, the part of england that she had been going to school i i'd been there 
um, a, a few times prior. Um, but uh, this was the first time where I was really like in an English city, kind of living in an English city for like a week. Um, and after a week, you know, uh, getting the full immersion experience of like the breakfast seven days yep. a week. And then strangely enough, butter chicken is like their favorite dish. <laughs> so I had like all this like Indian butter chicken. Oh, Every right. Day. Yeah. Because the Indian food. <laughs> yeah. Over there, it's like comparable to how like Mexican restaurants are available here. It's like the same. Yeah. Their Chipotle, our Chipotle is there like, you know, tamarind. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So did you have any like go to any pubs where they had, um, oh, like hen in a pot or like any of the like the meat pies? So like we would call it a chicken pot pie, but it's, yeah. but ours are garbage <laughs> compared to theirs. Yeah. Like I never even thought I liked them. And then I went there and tried and it was like, you know, pubs, whatever. And it's like so good. So yeah, so delicious. Did you try any of those with like either chicken or beef stew or anything in there? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, they they have pies with with meats that I've never heard of before. <laughs> something called like guinea fowl. Have you heard of guinea fowl? Yes. I yeah. <laughs> I've yeah. heard of it. Yeah. So it's a type of bird, and they got you know pies right. full of guinea fowl. Uh, sometimes pigeon. You know. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah. What's interesting to me is yeah. that we, we tend to have like one meat pies, but it mm -hmm. seems to be like really common for uh, them to have pies with like just tons of different meats going on. Inside. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like they'll mix it. Yeah, mix it up. Yeah, you'll get like and, 12 meat pie, you know. Right, right. Yeah, I, I like them, but I was thinking when you were talking about how much you like ramen because it's a lighter meal, I was thinking, well, British food, that's also a nap time meal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Talk about the opposite of light. I mean, it's basically <laughs> like a pound of bread wrapped in a pound of meat. Right. <laughs> you, you chase and it. Here, with here's beer. some mashed potatoes. <laughs> yeah, after the shine, chase it with a heavy beer. Exactly. You know, and then you get your clotted cream cookies for tea time. Too. Oh my gosh! Yes. Like, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. You need to. Yeah. If you're if you have a trip planned over to England, make sure that you have a lot of nap time. <laughs> during the day yeah yeah <laughs> you'll yeah. be sorry if you don't you'll just be falling asleep during one of your tours <laughs> It'll be a waste. actually let, let me show you something real quick yeah. get a out of this. <laughs> so for my wife's birthday mm -hmm. i got her a clock uh -huh. based on the hobbit uh from uh -huh. lord of the rings yeah and so it? Here, here it is oh my gosh i love it so much. oh i love it <laughs> oh my god that's so, awesome. So if, if you know the joke, hobbits, which are based off the English people, mm -hmm. have like six. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? So you have 11, <laughs> so you have breakfast over here. Right. Then you have second breakfast. Uh huh. Then you have a lens, a lensies. <laughs> then you have luncheon, afternoon tea, dinner, and then supper. Oh my God. That's so awesome. It's like hilarious to me because it's like six meals a day. And right, I think right. it's probably uniquely English. Yeah, sense. that does sound yeah about right. I have um, spent some time in like a house with uh, a group of Brits for like New Year's, and yeah, it kind of seemed like something was always happening in the kitchen. <laughs> like yeah, around right? the clock. Someone was making time. something to share with everyone. I know it's actually kind of fun. It's like wow, you know, a culture that really celebrates meal time and eating. Right, right, and yeah, out. yeah, yeah. And this one I have to say was a super like fun experience because so my friend Claire that I've known there for 20 years she had invited me over well we we see each other every uh every even numbered year and um so in 2018 I went and she let me tag along to her friend group's new year's thing and they had rented a house out in the countryside it was like the fourth or fifth year they had done it and there were like 14 people, I think like including me. One was coming from Canada. So it was like one Canadian, one American and everyone else was British. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so we're all in this giant old house um, and they had planned ahead of time, like cooking groups, who was gonna do which night of dinner. Wow. And, so and you were supposed to turn in your uh, ingredients list to the one person like a few weeks in advance and she like ordered all the groceries and they were like arriving as we got there. I mean, it was like beautifully <laughs> organized, but what was cool was that this old house had 
a giant long table, like banquet size table. So we all sat and ate every meal together, like all 14, wow. however many there were of us. Um, I mean, breakfast, I mean, even, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and, you know, the New Year's Day. So um, some people were laying on the floor next to the table. <laughs> they couldn't quite make it for breakfast. But they, they started out in their chair and then needed to lay down. <laughs> but they were still in the They, they either room. got up really early or just didn't go to bed at all. Yeah, that was the group that, yeah, it was like, you know, there were so many of us that some of us tailed off. I unfortunately was pretty sick on that trip, actually. But so I didn't make it too far after midnight, but there was a group that continued to have a dance party in like the cool old entryway until like probably at least five in the morning. <laughs> Good for them. That's so, that's so celebratory, especially New Year's Eve. That's great. Yeah, yeah. But it was cool. I said the house though was uh, on the website when I looked it up ahead of time that they had picked out, it said, you know, the oldest parts of the house date back to the Tudor era. So what's that, like 1,500, 1,600, something like yeah. that. Um, yeah. And then it said the more recent parts of the house, the newer parts of the house were from uh, like the 1,800s. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, I love that that's the newer, the newer part. And so that's why uh, I love to joke that I'm a bit of a snob here in the States. Some people are like, this is a historical home. It was built in 1920. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. is it? <laughs> Ooh, wow what an antique hey come over and see my thousand year old chapel in england I know. <laughs> yeah and it's just a shop to us like we don't even do anything <laughs> oh my gosh yeah and they got pubs that are a thousand years old i know it's so cool and like yeah. all the floor like floors ceilings nothing's like super level anymore <laughs> unless it's new construction yeah. and all the, the doorways are low which i'm sure you noticed <laughs> I know. Being your height, <laughs> they're not made like for you. Like five, eight, and like the 1800s, 1600s. Yeah. 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 So, uh, but yeah. Um, oh, I thought, so this actually reminds me. I have a new question I've been wanting to ask people. There's okay. a dog that wants out of here. One moment. <laughs> okay. And I say a dog because it's not my dog. <laughs> I'm not at my house. <laughs> Looks like a pretty Britney dog. <laughs> it's, yeah, I know. It's a, uh, he's like a little, little scrapper. <laughs> but, um, but I remembered one of my new questions I wanted to start asking people that I get from uh, one of the podcasts I listened to, Pete Holmes. He uh, has started asking people, now I don't want you to hold out on me. Do you have any like paranormal or like alien stories? Do you have anything with like ghosties or aliens or anything bizarre <laughs> that you would like to share because they're so interesting? <laughs> paranormal or ghost stories? Yeah, or like just anything creepy that's happened or like anything, yeah. Have you ever had anything that's happened before? It's okay if you haven't, but I like to ask people. Mm. <laughs> or someone you know that's like told you something that feels legit. <laughs> Sorry to pitch on this. Slide. Well, you know, psychology is one of those fields that kind of brushes up against the supernatural. Right. Yeah. What so, is, yeah. What does your training tell you? <laughs> right. Yeah. So the, the psychological field um, generally believes that um, the supernatural realm is, uh, is mythological. Okay. Um, so you, you tend to, uh, um you know get get laughed out of the classroom <laughs> if, if, you, if you if you and honestly this this is what the, the part of the history of, of why psychology became a thing mm -hmm. was because for the longest time people thought bipolar was a demon oh right people that's thought, true yeah like know, possession. Uh, illness was like your great grandfather coming to haunt you right, right. um now the truth is you know sometimes you can go to cultures where uh, uh, the psychology is so different mm -hmm. and uh, the people are, are so different that uh, it almost feels kind of creepy. Mm. And uh, when I was in India, <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, you know, they have something called a caste system. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the most similar, the most comparable thing we have here in America is basically like socioeconomic status. Right. So 
to, to kind of put it in American terms, they would have the billionaires mm -hmm. and then they would have like, you know, the homeless people. Right. And yet in their culture, it's so ingrained that right. people who are on the bottom of the totem pole, you know, could be as valuable as livestock while people uh, high in the totem pole are kind of like in charge of everything. Right. Yeah, and so probably, the, probably the, mm -hmm. yeah, so probably the strangest thing, you know, I, I saw over there was, you know, just, just how much people who are lower on the totem pole um, have to, you know, uh, um, get by with very eccentric and unique ways of, of mm -hmm. getting their work done. So I've seen people weave baskets using their toes because uh, they don't have, you know, a proper oh, right. machine to kind of weave it with. Mm -hmm. um, or people using a spatula and like a spoon to like repair a motorbike. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, how did you even use a spatula? I can't even use a wrench to repair right. a motorbike. Right. You need a spatula and a spoon. Right, right. You know? um, and just, you know, just the, just the ways that, you know, people who, um, you know, don't have access to, to mm -hmm. technology and resource that, that other people have, have to kind of come up with inventive and mm -hmm. creative ways um, to, to kind of get, get done the things they need to get done. And so, right. um, yeah, that was a really interesting experience, um, going over to India and just kind of seeing, wow, people live really differently. The, the, the culture is just so different. You're like, this right. is kind of creepy and paranormal and strange. <laughs> just, yeah, totally bizarre <laughs> or different yeah, from what you know. You, yeah. You, their big, their big God in India is a, is a monkey basically. Oh, okay. In the Hindu religion, you know, the, the, the greatest god is, is a monkey. And so mm -hmm. if you go to, you know, um, certain cities um, in India, uh, particularly where the Ganges meet, mm -hmm. uh, there's a whole town uh, where the Ganges uh, um, intersect uh, that's all built around, you know, Hindu spirituality. Uh, and so you'll see monkeys kind of revered there. You'll mm -hmm. see cattle revered there, you know. Right. And again, it's like, Wow, you see the Indian the Indian reverence for animal and wildlife because they believe in reincarnation because they believe oh, right. an animal could be like your aunt who right. reincarnated so you don't want to eat your aunt right right, right. Mm -hmm. so, um, just curious it's like really interesting yeah I guess kind of paranormal <laughs> <laughs> I love it <laughs> especially if you're American it's like okay that's that little paranormal right right <laughs> that's your paranormal here on earth. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's a great question. That's a fun yeah. question. Thanks. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, and what triggered my memory is because it's about how old the house was, and I was like halfway nervous to go stay in the old house in England, but I was like, I was like, well, I feel like English ghosts are never the scary ones. Like all the scary mean ones, they're all in America. So. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Why can't we have the ones fun? That, yeah, it's like the ones you hear about in England. It's like. You know, you might see uh, like Anne Boleyn like crying down the hall because you know she's about to be beheaded. <laughs> right, so, right. But she's not. But she's not hurting you. She's not yeah. even interacting with you. She's just passing by. Yeah, or maybe she wants to stop in for some tea and talk about. It, you know, <laughs> right, right. Like really talk about her. Time. Talk about her feelings. Like before, clear her mind before she goes. <laughs> To the the American ghosts are like throwing things across the room and you're like playing dodgeball. Right, right, right exactly. <laughs> but that's awesome. Well, I think I think that's all I've got. I like to also ask, do you have any final words? <laughs> Gosh, this conversation has been so fun. I don't even know how to end it. How, how, how do you how do you put a bow on talking about Rami ghost? <laughs> And a little bit of psychology. I know. Yeah, my transitions aren't real smooth. That's why I'm just like, all right, do you have any final words? <laughs> yeah. Have anything else? I guess just have fun. Uh, yeah. Cook something nice for yourself, and um, yeah, go have go have some some tea time with yeah. Amy Michelle. Uh, <laughs> Thank this you. This conversation is any insight into how fun they are. They're probably a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, cheers. And with my cool invoice uh, set <laughs> mug. <laughs> thank you so yeah. much, Nate, for joining me. Uh, yeah. Thank you, everyone who watched live and who will watch this in the future going forward. Um, uh, I am Amy Mitchell with Houses of Windsor. This has been Virtual Tea Time with Amy. And again, my special guest was Nate Webster. Thank you, Nate. Yeah. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Bye. Bye.